Verrucked. The scariest and arguably one of the most difficult zombie maps ever made. Despite its simplicity, it's become a fan favorite since its launch, bringing back old and newer players. So, why is it a fan favorite? What makes it so scary, and how have speedrunners pushed this map to its limits? On March 19th, 2009, the first version of Verrucked would be released to the public for Call of Duty World at War, eventually being reintroduced into Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3. While three versions of the map exist, we'll be focusing on the Black Ops 1 version. When Treyarch reintroduced Verrucked, they did not make any changes besides new weapons. Although, the core gameplay was much different than the World at War version, which only had 24 zombies per round. This forced players to run new and unique strategies just to get to a high round. Lastly, the map was not officially released for Black Ops 1 until August 23, 2011 with the Resurrection DLC. However, it was still possible for people to play Verrucked in all the World at War maps if they bought the hardened version of Black Ops. The way a player would unlock these maps is by going to the computer in the main menu and typing 3 arc unlock. This is crucial information to know as a world record history starts before August 23rd, 2011. In fact, just a few months after Black Ops 1 released, the first record would be recorded. A legendary player named the Jim Bogabo would reach round 113, making this the first ever round 100 on Verrucked. For the first ever record on Verrucked, this was extremely impressive because of the map's notorious difficulty. Furthermore, this was one of the first ever round 100s on Black Ops 1, and the way Jim Bogabo achieved such a round is by running his own strategy. The way this strategy would work is he would sit in the STG room and wait for the zombies to spawn. This allowed him to abuse spawn control and force the zombies to only spawn in the STG room, power, and the double tap area. Once he let the zombies spawn, he made one big loop around the map. Then, when he reached the double tap area, he would activate the electro trap and let the zombies die, eventually running back into the STG area allowing him to repeat the strategy. Because of how well Jim abused the spawn control and how slow the strategy was, it was surprisingly easy. Although, he would still use four perks, two of which were Quick Revive and Juggernog. If you don't know, Quick Revive is a perk that allows a player to be revived three times. This means they have multiple chances of continuing their solo game. Juggernog, on the other hand, allows a player to survive up to four hits instead of two. This is arguably the most useful perk to use on Verrucked because of its claustrophobic map design and its use of electric traps. Despite this, it wasn't very helpful in the earlier years of Verrucked because another player named Draculantern would beat Chimbogabo by reaching around 115, running the same strategy. Obviously, this is a bit ridiculous. The fact two players within the span of just a couple of months achieved two round 100s on arguably one of the most difficult zombie maps is nuts, despite having an extremely easy strategy. To put it bluntly, the standards back then were much simpler, yet Jim and Draculantern put Verrucked in its place. It wasn't until almost a year later, on August 11th, 2012, the zombie cow would reach round 127, beating Draculantern by 12 rounds. Unfortunately, we do not know the strategy he used to achieve such a big jump from the previous record, as the footage is private. Nonetheless, this was a massive improvement from the previous record, and would also remain the only Verrucked record of 2012. Once the year 2013 came around, an insane amount of records were broken on many Black Ops 1 maps, one of them being Verrucked. From the start to the end of 2013, Verrucked saw three different world records, the first of which was achieved on April 13th, 2013 by Frenzy, reaching round 132. Similar to the previous records, Frenzy ran the same strategy. This means there isn't much to talk about this record. However, the next record is when the history starts to get a little interesting. 
On October 18th, 2013, a player by the name of BP1994 would achieve round 134, beating Frenzy by two rounds. What makes this record interesting is the sheer lack of gameplay. BP only showed the game over screen. Because of this, a lot of people question whether this record was legit or not. Even for 2013 standards, having this little of gameplay was laughable. Furthermore, just two months earlier, BP would achieve round 173 on BO1 Shinonuma, making this a world record. But just like his supposed Varukt record, the Shinonuma record barely had any footage, 5 minutes and 22 seconds to be exact. If you haven't noticed already, BP has had a history of lacking gameplay. Though, it's tough to say if the Varukt record was cheated. The points look like they add up, and since the Lecture Traps don't count kills on the leaderboard, it only shows he has 771 kills. This also appears to add up, since he more than likely used the Ray Gun in the early rounds. The only suspicious thing is the 201 headshots, which is quite a lot for 771 kills. Despite this, there's a chance this was more than likely cheated, due to the lack of gameplay. Unless BP has more unreleased footage, we'll never truly know if he played the game legitimately. Fortunately, this record drama would not last for long. Me IL Steve IL If you've been in the zombies community for a while now, you more than likely have heard his name at least once. And if you haven't, now you do. Steve is arguably one of the best zombie players of all time. He's been playing for over 10 years and still consistently breaks world records till this day, most of them being easter egg speedruns. Although before easter egg speedruns were a popular thing, Steve was a big high rounder. On December 5th, 2013, Steve would achieve a new world record of round 138. What makes this record stand out from others is a strategy he used. Unlike the previous ones which used a single trap, Steve would run a double trap strategy, utilizing both of the traps on the map. This was a game changer as Steve valued playing faster rather than safer. The way he ran this strategy was fairly simple. First, he would stand near the double tap trap with the door leading to the STG room closed. Then, when the zombies spawned, he would go into the Thompson room and run up to the speed cola trap and activate it. Once the zombies ran through the trap, he would go back down the stairs and run to the double tap trap and activate it. Once the zombies ran through this trap, he would repeat the loop until the round was finished. This was a fairly simple strategy, however, it had its flaws. Because it was the first double trap strategy on Verrugged, the zombie spawns were fairly inconsistent. Matter of fact, they were so inconsistent, he took his first two downs on round 100, causing him to throw away all of his monkey bombs. Then, he would take his third down on round 136 before game overing on 138. Despite the bad spawns, the fact Steve was able to achieve a world record running the most difficult strategy on the map for the time is extremely impressive. Because of this, no one dared to run the strategy for a little while. It wasn't until April 30th, 2014, a new world record of round 156 would be achieved by Space Marine 360, arguably the best zombie player at the time. Similar to all of the previous records before Steve's record, he ran the single trap strategy. This explains why he was able to break the record by 18 rounds, the most for the map at the time. Surprisingly, this jump in rounds wasn't what made this record special or unique. What makes it unique is Space Marine achieving the first ever reset on the map. If you don't know what a reset is, let me break it down for you. On each map, there's a specific amount of time you can play before the game resets you back to round 1. The reason this happens is because of the coding of the game. To be more specific, there are a set amount of objects and sounds on the map, which are called entities. These entities will add up every 50 milliseconds. These count towards a 32-bit integer limit, which is 2 billion, 147 million, 483,647. 
Because a number is so large, it allows maps to have a reset of roughly 70 hours or more. This is why Space Marine's game is so special. He was the first person to play long enough without game overing. Furthermore, he set a new standard for Verrucked. Because everyone resets at a very similar time, the only way to beat him was to play more consistently or play a faster strategy. For the first time ever, Verrucked was now a speedrun. As amazing as this accomplishment was, the record would not stand for long. On September 10th, 2014, Jam achieved round 179, breaking Space's record by 23 rounds, making this the biggest round gap in Verrucked's history. To put into perspective of how insanely impressive this record was, Jam ran the double trap strategy all the way till reset and achieved the first ever insta-kill rounds. Similar to reset, the zombie's health tries to go over the 32-bit integer limit on round 163, but it can't, so the game has no other choice but to reset the zombie's health back to round 1. Although, this does not occur on every round. Instead, it usually happens on every other round. Because of this, it makes high rounds slightly easier as you can shoot the zombies, making these rounds faster than normal rounds. This is part of the reason why Jam was able to break Space's record by a significant amount. On top of that, the insta-kill strategy Jam ran was the Thompson Room. This room is fairly long and allows for safe insta-kill rounds because of three reasons. The first of which is a corner near Mule Kick. Because most of the windows are on the right side, the zombies will jump out of the windows and run in a straight line towards the player. The only window you have to worry about is the left window in the wall. But because there's a shelf right next to the Thompson, it takes a while for the zombies from the left window to reach the player, allowing them to get in reloads quickly. The second reason is the Thompson. The weapon is extremely powerful for a wall buy, and it just so happens to be right next to the corner. And lastly, the third reason. Because Jam kept the door to the stairs closed, the zombies would only spawn in the courtyard, Thompson Room, and Cook Revive Room. These are the three reasons why the Thompson Room is nearly perfect for insta-kill rounds. Understandably, this record would go down in the history books. The endurance, skill, and pace Jam played was almost perfect. If someone wanted to beat this record, it would take up to a year or more. At least, that's what some players thought. Nearly four months later, Space Marine would get his record back by achieving round 182 on January 4th, 2015, beating Jam by just three rounds. As small of an improvement this was, the fact he managed to beat Jam was absurd, and the way he did it was by making small improvements to the strategy. While running towards a double tap trap, Space would immediately activate it. This was to prevent the extra zombies that might wrap around the trap after he ran through it, which was a common issue during Jam's game. Because of this small improvement, Space was able to play the strategy more consistently and also a little faster, hence why he was able to beat Jam by just a few rounds. Although, Space made a few mistakes. Instead of running the Thompson Room strategy for insta-kill rounds, he would run kitchen instas with the door to power open. This quickly proved problematic for him as he had three spawns to deal with, the speed cola, kitchen, and power room, all of which were in three different directions. Unfortunately, this would result in him taking his second down. This made Space Marine switch up the insta-kill strategy. Instead of running kitchen instas, he would run bar instas in the quick revive room. This was questionable as it was less safe than the Thompson Instas and he would lose a lot of time because Bar Instas was slower. Eventually, he would reset on round 182, but there was still a lot of improvement that could be done to bring the record higher, eventually causing tons of competition. Throughout the rest of 2015 and 2016, there would be tons of different players trying to beat the record, one of them being Mamone arguably the greatest co-op player ever, and one of the best overall players in the game's history. On October 25th, 2015, Mamone would achieve a new record of round 186, 
Similar to Space Marine, Mimone would run the same strategy. However, when it came to insta-kill round, he would run the Thompson room. Obviously, this improved on the bar instas Space ran in his game, allowing Mimone to beat the record. Surprisingly, this would be the shortest held record in Varek's history, it's just 3 weeks later, Z Pro Play would achieve round 187 on November 20th, 2015. Despite beating Mimone by only one round, the improvements Pro Play used was absurd. First, let's take a look at the strategy. When Pro Play goes near the double tap trap, he does not activate it right away. Instead, he wraps all the way around double tap until the zombies are next to him and activates it. This is very similar to jam strategy, though when he runs to the next location on the map to manipulate the spawns, he stays in the kitchen rather than the area right next to power. This forces the zombies to only spawn in power, kitchen, and speed cola, which means he'd have a more consistent hoard up. This also meant he didn't have to wait as long for the zombies to come near the bar trap, allowing him to play faster. The name of this strategy would be known as Black Ops Strat. For the second and last improvement, Pro Play would throw grenades while shooting zombies in the Thompson room. This is something players never did until Pro's game because of how difficult it is to try throwing grenades and shooting zombies. It was seen as too difficult and somewhat inconsistent. But, Pro Play proved otherwise. With these two improvements, he was able to play nearly 10 hours faster than Mimone, which shows just how big the insta-kill and normal round strategy improvements were. As awesome as this was, it put Pro Play in a bad spot. His game ended when he had 9 hours left before it reset. And because he used all of these improvements, it was much easier to break his record as the strategies were now more publicly known thanks to his record. Unfortunately, this would be Pro Play's first and last time holding the Verrucked record. Then, on March 30th, 2016, Mimone would get his record back by achieving round 192. This record would use Black Ops Strat throughout most of the game until round 158. The reason for this is because Mimone downed two times before reaching instas, and this game would lag every time the zombies ran through the trap. This is called trap lag and usually only happens on console. Understandably, running Black Ops Strat with trap lag made Farouk significantly more difficult than it needed to be. Due to this, he would go back to Space Marine strategy and run it all the way up till reset. Because he switched strategies mid-game, he would only reach round 192 instead of 195 plus. So there was still a lot of time that could be saved if you ran Black Ops Strat all the way up till reset. Though, this was insanely difficult to do. So much so that it would result in the first record drought in Varuk's history. From here on, new records would become rare. However, it didn't stop players from trying. A few of these players were named Vsat, Dave Private Asskick, and Furt Can Walk. Vsat had a little bit of success. On November 25th, 2014, he would reach round 111. Then, just two weeks later, he would reach round 114. This was still far from the record, but for an upcoming player, it was still pretty impressive. It wasn't until March 26, 2016, his game would air on round 157, just 30 rounds away from the record. I should note, he ran a different strategy than Black Ops Strat, but had he made it to reset, there could have been a small chance he got the record. As for Dave, well, he too wasn't having much luck. In 2018, his PC crashed on round 156. This game was also on record pace. Unfortunately, gameplay no longer exists, but it's believed he played flawlessly, which means he did not down once, which is insanely impressive for Verrucked. As for Furret, well, he wasn't having the best time. What the heck? Akbar. No. Attends, on va juste rigoler. Tu veux que je fasse quoi?
Et en plus, ce fils de pute, il m'a bloqué <rire> Attends le, le zombie qui a spawn au pouvoir qu'il a niqué Attends, 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 attends. <rire> Yeah. If you couldn't already tell, Vrucht is a map that will make you go insane. The sheer difficulty of the map is enough to make a player to never touch it. Although, some are persistent enough to continue playing, no matter the cost. And that's exactly what Furret did. Throughout 2017 and early 2018, Furret would play Vrucht on and off eventually achieving the round 50 speedrun world record with a time of 1 hour and 27 minutes. Though, at the time, this would be one of the only improvements made on the map. It wasn't until March 2018, Oxygen for the Wind would create a spreadsheet explaining how you can maximize your reset. You see, before this spreadsheet, players thought the reset was somewhat random. They had an idea of when you would reset, but, for some players, it would vary from an hour or two. However, when Oxygen released a spreadsheet, it showed all the ways you could extend it. If you remember from earlier, reset is based on how many objects and sounds are on the map. Well, if you do certain things, such as opening debris on the map, or reducing graphic content, you could extend the reset by a significant amount. Instead of resetting at 79 hours, you can now reset at 83 hours. This means you could push the record by an additional 3 to 4 rounds, even if you were just as fast as Mimone. And if you decided to run Black Ops Strat for the entire game, you could achieve the first round 200 or higher on Verrucked. Because players now figured out how to extend the reset, every map in BO1, especially Verrucked, would get tons of competition from both old and new players. Understandably, players such as Furret would start grinding the map in hopes of getting the world record and potentially the first 200. It wasn't until early June of 2018 he would get a game going. At the start, it wasn't going too well. He achieved a time of 34 minutes to 30, which was okay, but his 50 time was way worse achieving a time of 1 hour and 43 minutes to 50. Either way, this didn't really matter. As long as he played Black Ops Strat all the way till reset, he was guaranteed to get the record. And that's exactly what happened. By the time he reached round 100, he was already faster than Mimone. And by instas, he was nearly 4 hours faster. And by 192, he was almost 10 hours faster. Because Furret was this fast, it allowed him to reach round 206 with the extended reset. This was crazy. We knew 200 was possible, but to achieve 206 seemed almost impossible. So, how was Furret able to achieve this round? Well, the first and most obvious improvement was running Black Ops Strat all the way to reset. However, the second and arguably most important improvement was the insta-kill rounds. Similar to the previous two records, he threw grenades, but there was one thing I did not mention. The rate at which Mimone and Pro Play threw the grenades was slow. Most of the time, they were shooting the zombies with the Thompson. This is also what Fura did up until the 180s. That's when he started changing up the strategy. Instead of throwing grenades here and there, and then utilizing the Thompson, he would fully utilize the grenades and only use the Thompson when necessary. This is partly why he was able to save so much time over Mimone and achieve round 206, although you could still achieve a higher round. As optimized as the 206 game was, you could save time by using grenades only as soon as you reach instas since Furret didn't start doing this until nearly 20 rounds later. And you could run Black Ops Strat 1 to 2 SPH faster because Furret played a safer version of the strategy. If you're wondering what SPH means, it's the amount of seconds it takes to kill a horde of zombies. So the faster the SPH, the faster the strategy will be. This is important as you always want to play the fastest strategy, but there's a catch. Usually the faster the strategy, the more difficult it is, and this is why Verruckt is so challenging to play. Sure, 
for its CO6 game wasn't fully optimized, but to actually play up to that round, running faster strategies, would take a lot of time and effort. Understandably, this record would last for a very long time. Unlike the previous years which had competition, barely anyone played Verrekt from this point on. There were a few players who made it to the 150s and higher, but that was about as far as they'd get. Nobody wanted to grind the map after for its record. It wasn't until a few years later when three players named Nestor, Legna, and Trickies would start grinding Verrekt. Tricky started in 2019, but it wasn't until 2021 when he put a lot of effort into Verrucked, eventually achieving the round 50 speedrun world record on multiple occasions. Furthermore, he would achieve round 120. This was very far from the record, but was one of the highest rounds achieved on the map since for its record. Then, on May 8, 2021, Legna would achieve round 201, making this a second ever round 200 on the map. Sadly, his game would end 5 rounds off the record, but there was a high chance he wouldn't have tied for his 206 game as he was almost an hour slower than him. As for Nestor, he had a promising future for Verrucked. He already held a few top 5 spots on multiple maps such as Keynote or Toten, so he was very familiar with BO1 Zombies. In fact, he was so familiar with Zombies, in June of 2021, he would achieve round 184 on Verrucked, which was an hour faster than Furret. Then, in early September of 2021, Nestor was on a game that was even with Furret's pace, up to round 190. This game was fairly promising, because if he survived just another 13 or so hours, he would tie the record. But then, this happened. Voy a... No me lo creo. Esto no me puede pasar a mí. And lastly, in June of 2022, he would reach round 201, making this the third ever 200 on the map. Unfortunately, his game would close just five rounds away from tying the record. This was starting to get ridiculous. On three different occasions, Nessar's games ended extremely close to the record, and two out of three of these games were over an hour faster than Furret. At this point, no one could say for certain if Nessar would get the record. It's entirely possible he could game over before 206, or worse, his game could crash, which is a common issue on Furret, as it already happened to many different players, such as Vsat and Dave. Fortunately for Nestor, this would be the last time his game closed, but he would still have his ups and downs. It wasn't until October 7th of 2022, Nestor would finally achieve the world record with a round of 208, beating for it by just two rounds. Obviously, one of the improvements was from using grenades only during insta-kill rounds, but the biggest improvement came from the Black Ops strategy. During Furret's 206 record, when he runs out of the speed cola trap, he waits a little bit near the kitchen area and stalls the zombies with the MP40. However, when Nestor ran out of the speed cola trap, he instantly runs into the kitchen, waits 2-3 to three seconds, then runs into the power room. This made the strategy riskier, but allowed him to play faster as the zombies would spawn near the double tap trap, making him 1 SPH faster than Furret. Understandably, this was a really impressive record. The fact Nestor managed to push the record as far as he did with some small optimizations is crazy. So, it seems like there's no other optimizations you can do, right? No. In fact, there's still a few optimizations you can do if you want to beat Nestor's game. First, you can play early rounds a little faster, which will allow you to be up to 20 minutes faster by round 60. Next, if you minimize the amount of times you stall the zombies while shooting them with the MP40, you can play slightly faster running Black Ops Strat. As for the final optimization, you can run the only other strategy that's faster. The strategy's name is Dat Strat. Dat Strat is quite complicated to explain as there's so many variations of it. Though, the most common variation is having the door to power close 
and manipulating the zombie spawns by sitting in the kitchen area. Although, some versions allow players to run dash strat with the door to power open. This means you can run dash strat for the first part of the game and switch to black ops strat, but to attempt this would be extraordinarily difficult. Also, I should note that each variation has its own speed, the fastest of which can go as low as 25 SPH. Understandably, playing at such an SPH is extremely difficult, especially considering how small the rooms are used for the strategy. But what if someone managed to run this to reset? Well, if they did and used the kitchen strategy for insta-kill rounds, they could achieve round 225 to potentially 230. Because the strategy is so difficult, such a round won't be achieved for a while. Matter of fact, since Strat's existence back in 2013, only a few players have managed to make it to round 100 using the strategy, and that only just started happening recently. So, for now, unless players get way better, realistically speaking, the highest round someone could reach would be 210 if you ran Black Ops Strat perfectly. But what if someone decided to not use Black Op and grind Dat Strat instead? Well, I've decided to leave a few videos in the description showcasing how you could run both Dat Strat and Kitchen Instas in case you want to break the record. On top of that, Sir Modulot made a really good video detailing exactly how to play the strategy and what to do in tricky situations. I'd also like to give a special thanks to a few people who helped out with the video. First, thank you to Mr. Mooney and Becca for finding these records so I could tell their stories to you. Also, I would like to thank Fishyzor and Trickies for giving me info on the earlier records and how some of these strategies were done. Thank you for watching.